Patients are concerned about the safety of their ACE inhibitors or ARBs in the context of COVID-19. However, more and more data are now accumulating that they are perfectly safe and should not be stopped. Let's check out the evidence. Some experts have suggested that antihypertensive medications such as ACE inhibitors increase a person's risk of severe outcomes to SARS-CoV-2 infection. These reports lead to patient anxiety and uncertainty about the safety of their essential blood pressure medications during the COVID-19 pandemic. In this update, we'll look at this special report published in the New England Journal of Medicine about the effects of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or RAAS, inhibitors in patients with COVID-19. First, let's explore the association between COVID-19 and hypertension. Hypertension is one of the most frequent coexisting chronic conditions among patients with COVID-19. Hypertension is also consistently reported to be more common among patients with severe or critical presentations of COVID-19. Hypertension is also more commonly reported among those that were admitted to the ICU, received mechanical ventilation, or died compared with patients who experienced milder outcomes. Most patients with hypertension take RAAS inhibitors, including ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs, or angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitors, or ARNIs. This has led to concern that the use of these antihypertensive agents contributed to the worsened clinical manifestations of COVID-19. But researchers have suggested that only 30 to 40% of patients with hypertension in China take antihypertensive therapy and only 25 to 30% of these patients take a drug from the RAAS inhibitor family. So, of the COVID-19 positive patients with concomitant hypertension included in these Chinese studies conducted early in the pandemic, only a fraction of these patients would have been taking RAAS inhibitors. The small sample size in these studies made it challenging to associate RAAS inhibitors to worse clinical outcomes of COVID-19 infections. This more recent study, published in JAMA Cardiology, followed 1,178 patients with COVID-19, while 115 patients were on ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Their results demonstrate that ACE inhibitors and ARBs were not associated with worse outcomes or increased mortality. Another study published recently in Circulation Research actually showed a lower risk of all-cause mortality among hospitalized patients with COVID-19 who were taking ACE inhibitors or ARBs for coexisting hypertension. So, where does the concern about these drugs in particular come from? In the RAAS pathway, Angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. Angiotensin 2 is degraded by the membrane bound ACE2 into angiotensin 1 7. ACE inhibitors block the effect of ACE and reduce the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. SARS CoV 2 has been shown to enter cells by binding to ACE2. Some experts are concerned that anything that alters the expression or function of ACE2, like ACE inhibitors, could promote viral entry into the cell. So what's the evidence? It's important to note first that although both ACE2 and ACE bind to angiotensin 2, they act on different binding sites. ACE inhibitors do not directly affect the activity of ACE2. With lower angiotensin II levels in people taking ACE inhibitors, it has been hypothesized that ACE2 might become overexpressed on the cell surface as it tries to bind to any circulating angiotensin II and convert it to angiotensin 1-7. Researchers measured angiotensin 1-7 levels in people taking ACE inhibitors to detect increased ACE2 expression and function. 
These researchers did not find evidence that administration of ACE inhibitors increased the expression or function of ACE2. Studies showing the effects of RAAS inhibitors on lung cell-specific expression of ACE2 are lacking. But even if RAAS inhibitors increased ACE2 levels at the lung cell surface, clinical data is lacking to confirm whether this effect facilitates the entry of SARS-CoV-2. There are currently too many knowledge gaps to associate RAAS inhibitor use to changes in ACE2 expression and increased infectivity to SARS-CoV-2. Other experts even suggest a possible benefit of RAAS inhibitors. Interestingly, one study showed that exposing mice lung cells to the spike protein of a different SARS virus called SARS-CoV, the pathogen of the original SARS, decreased the expression of ACE2 at the cell surface level. In lung tissue, decreased expression of ACE2 leads to accumulation of angiotensin II and activation of the RAAS and promotes acute lung injury. RAAS inhibitors are therefore hypothesized to limit acute lung injury in this pathway. In a small study that included 12 patients with COVID-19, elevated angiotensin II levels were observed in all COVID-19 patients when compared with healthy subjects. This increase in angiotensin II was also linearly associated with viral load and lung injury. Finally, many COVID-19 patients show markers of myocardial injury that increase rapidly with clinical deterioration and preceding death. ACE2 has a well-recognized role in myocardial recovery and injury response, and its downregulation may contribute to deteriorating myocardial effects during COVID-19 infection. Currently, studies are underway to examine the effect of recombinant ACE2 protein administration in rebalancing the RAAS and preventing organ injury. Studies are also underway to test the effectiveness of the angiotensin II receptor blocker Lozartan as a treatment for COVID-19. So what are the current recommendations? Patients with underlying cardiovascular disease may develop worse clinical outcomes of COVID-19. RAAS inhibitors have a role in protecting the kidney and myocardium and withdrawing these medications can result in a progressive decline in clinical status, which can cause clinical decompensation in patients with COVID-19. More than a dozen international societies have recently released statements around the topic. They highlight the well-established cardiovascular risks associated with abruptly stopping antihypertensives and conclude that there is currently a lack of clinical evidence to support the withdrawal of RAAS inhibitors in response to COVID-19. That's it for now. If you want to improve your understanding of epidemiology, make sure to register for a free Mastery trial account and attend our Epidemiology Essentials course. We've just opened it up to trial users due to the huge demand. So stay safe and talk soon.